The topics and opinions expressed in the following show are solely those of the hosts and their guests and not those of W4CY Radio, its employees, or affiliates. We make no recommendations or endorsements for radio show programs, services, or products mentioned on air or on our web. No liability, explicit or implied, shall be extended to W4CY Radio or its employees or affiliates. Any questions or comments should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for choosing W4CY Radio. What's working on purpose anyway? Each week, we ponder the answer to this question. People ache for meaning and purpose at work, to contribute their talents passionately, and know their lives really matter. They crave being part of an organization that inspires them and helps them grow into realizing their highest potential. Business can be such a force for good in the world, elevating humanity. In our program, we provide guidance and inspiration to help usher in this world we all want, working on purpose. Now, here's your host, Dr. Elise Cortez. Welcome back to the Working on Purpose program. Thanks for tuning in again this week. I'm your host, Dr. Elise Cortez, joining you live from Dallas, which is home base for me. By way of introduction, I'm a management consultant specializing in meaning and purpose, organizational logotherapist, inspirational speaker, social scientist, and author. And guess what? My book is out today, November 17th. Purpose Ignited is here. It's actually now sitting around in people's homes and offices. Thank you so much for your support and your interest. You can learn more about me at elisecortez.com or gusto-now.com. If you've been tuning in for a while, you know this program is a thought leadership series that enlightens and inspires listeners and viewers with insights from distinguished business leaders, authors, and subject matter experts. By listening in, you're part of the movement to create inspirational leaders and enlivening workplaces where we can thrive and do business that betters the world. Glad you're here. Now, on to this week's program. With us today is Karen Weeks. She is the Senior Vice President of People at Order Group and was named one of the 2020 Notable Women in Talent by Crane's New York Business. She is a certified career coach, speaker, advisor to startup companies, Girls in Tech NYC board member, and the published author of Setting the Stage, a guide to preparing for any feedback conversation. She also hosts the podcast, Getting Off the Hamster Wheel, which sounds fantastic. We'll be talking about how she and the team at Order Group are making their their new way forward in the pandemic. She joins us today from New York City. Karen, welcome to Working on Purpose. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Isn't this fun? This is amazing. And, and congratulations and on your book. Thank you. It's so exciting. We're having more fun than I'm supposed to, so don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> uh, right? So it's so great. So it's as we were saying, isn't it nice to be on the other side of the mic, right? It is. It's. Uh, I love sharing stories, so it'll be fun to kind of share mine this time. Well, that's where I want to start, right? Since our listeners don't know you, you, you and I've had a conversation or two, so I know a couple of things about you, but our listeners don't know much about you. So I, I thought it would be important if you just started to say a little bit about your background. Uh, you're an HR professional today, 20 years in, but you told me something fascinating. You started in theater arts. That's so amazing. So paint the picture of your background for us a little, if you would. Absolutely. So I thought I was going to be a stage manager. I actually worked professionally for a couple of years as a stage manager. And while I loved the work, when it had to be my livelihood, it was very stressful, at least for me. Mm. Um, It's like being an actor. You don't know where your next job's going to be. If you're going to have another job, are you going to get paid? (laughs) So I thought that's too much stress for me. I tried moving out to LA and worked for a talent agency for a while. I thought maybe the business side of the arts maybe would be the right balance. And just LA wasn't right for me. I, it could have been because I was just so young, uh, both literally and in my career, but I realized that that wasn't the right place either. So all of a sudden I was sitting there about three, four years into my career going, I don't know what I want to be anymore. What do I do? And so I kind of <laughs> took a step back and thought about, I really enjoy creating a shared experience for people. And I like helping people with their careers, which is what I was doing for the actors, getting jobs. And Mm -hmm. someone said, I think that's HR. And I said, okay. So I tried it out and almost 20 years later, here I am. Wow. That's amazing. It's really amazing, right? I sort of fell into human capital similarly. And once I got there, I went, I went, oh, this is where I'm supposed to be. People are my products. Perfect. Um, okay, so I since you know that I'm a meeting and work researcher, I think you know that anyway. Yes. I'm meeting and work and identity researcher, among other things. You know I have to ask you why you love HR. <laughs> I think the thing that for me is, and this has really been interesting to watch this evolve ever since I first got into HR, when it was much more transactional still and um, 
focused on payroll and benefits and those sort of things, is that companies now realize the success of their people is directly tied into the success of their business. And it's, I'm no longer a cost center. I'm actually helping you hit your business goals by hiring and retaining the right people, creating the right environment for them. And that's why I got into HR. I wanted to help people with their careers and help them be in a space that they felt safe and excited and they could be themselves. And so to be a part of creating that culture, but now businesses realize how important that is as well. And I think that's just fueled my fire even more. Mm -hmm. One thing that you and I have in common is we recognize that work can be such a great part of life, right? It's yes. such a, it's not something that you should drag yourself into. In fact, the reason why I started hosting Working on Purpose five and a half years ago is I wanted to tell stories about people or showcase stories about people who are passionate about their work because I found out in my research that most people didn't recognize that you could be passionate about what you do. <laughs> What I, can't I know. Well, you work so much. And especially right now when work is so integrated into life, if you're not enjoying what you're doing, it's actually impacting the other pieces of your life. Absolutely. So it's not just about enjoying nine to five. It, it, it makes you a healthier person and a happier person in general. Absolutely. You actually live longer too when you're having a better time at work. So turns out you're not, you're not one of those people that actually ends up having a heart attack on Monday morning, oftentimes, which is oh. a terrible stat, right? Yes. Uh, you and I are working to, to alter that tide. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, let's talk about Order Groove. I had never heard of your company before. I tell for our listeners, what do you do? Who do you serve? How do you get started? What's the purpose of the company? Yeah. So 10 years ago, our CEO, who's also our founder, actually is a big tennis player and his uh, strings would always break and he wouldn't have the next set of strings and it would impact his game. And he said, there's got to be a way where I get the strings exactly when I need them based on the amount I play. And that prompted Order Groove. And so we are a SaaS technology platform that helps retailers and brands create recurring revenue uh, products. So whether that's subscriptions to like dog food or diapers, whether that is a reorder program, so you're uh, able to be notified when we think you're going to need your next order, whether that is like a monthly box to, can to handle all your wellness. It can look like a lot of different things, but we work with Vitamin Shop, Honest Company, um, Walmart Canada, PetSmart, lots of different companies in order to help, especially in today's times, have you get what you need when you need it. I love that. That's great. I, I, I don't think I could have quite generated that from what I got on your website. That's mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, okay. And now one of the things that you said when we first spoke on the on, on, on the phone, and I love that we met on, I think it was LinkedIn. I, yes. I appreciate one of us found the other one, but um, you said that uh, order group puts people first and empowers them. And of course you had me at that statement. That's so, so <laughs> important. So tell me how. I think it is really through, we believe we hire smart professional adults. And so we are going to treat you that way. Now, if you show differently, that's we'll deal with that separately, but we're going to assume the best of you because that's why we hired you. So we offer flexibility. We allow you to manage the time the way you need to. We try to think through flexible programs that support whatever way you like to work and however you're living your life. And actually that really helped us going into 2020 was that we already had that muscle of flexibility and trust that we were not gonna micromanage people. And we believe that you are gonna be your best self. And with that intent, most people are. It's amazing when you ask people to be their best, they usually present their best. Oh my goodness. So let's look at the questions coming in here really quick. Let's just grab this. So we wanted, we want to distinguish. So the, we've got a question here is that this is an HR or a shopping company. So Karen is an, a human resource professional and Karen distinguished how you would describe the company. Yes. So we partner with e-commerce companies to work with retailers. Okay. So they're, we're, they're not an HR company. That's important that you recognize Correct. that um, listener. Thanks for weighing in with us. And then look at this question. How would one apply for a position with this company? See, look what this, oh my this, gosh. This fun? <laughs> Already, I was amazed. Um, so we have a career site. It's ordergroove.com backslash careers. And we're hiring in engineering and marketing specifically right now. But we also have some open pipeline for sales roles. Uh, and we're going to need client services roles probably in the new year. Awesome. How fun is this, right? Thanks, listeners, for engaging with us. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So one of since this, sh what I wanted to focus on the show is I really wanted to showcase what companies, innovative companies are doing to address the COVID situation, which seems to be ongoing for, for, for who knows how long. So help us understand the challenges or opportunities that the pandemic has presented to order group as an operation, not, so not, not, not from a nature advantage point first, but yeah. as an operation. It's so interesting because we are so thankful that 
because a lot of stores shut down, even though some of our client stores were open, Home Depot is one of our clients and they're clearly an essential business. But even with that, our clients had to rethink how they were running their business. And so they turned to us to be a partner there, either because they were having inventory issues, because they, their warehouse warehouses were shut down, or they were trying to get more inventory online or do different deals. How do I buy online, pick up in store? There were so many different things that they had to think through. So we immediately had to re-partner uh, with them on how to build the best programs for them based on this whole new world that we that they were going through. Okay, so that's that's one one major thing. What else? Help us kind of understand what I want to do here for our listeners and our viewers is help them really understand, you know, just the the the, the breadth and depth of what you as your company has kind of dealt with. So that's a, that's a major one. How to how to serve your your clients? What else? Yeah, I think internally we were very much New York centric from a team perspective. Um, FaceTime was important to us. Mm -hmm. And so we not just literally had to go work from home, but how do we keep that collaboration and those um, relationships strong as we were making some really big business decisions, even though we've been around for 10 years, it's probably been the last five or six years that we really kind of hit the ground running and we're still very startup-y. So we are trying things for the first time, partnering with brand new partners, trying to train new partners to work with us for the first time. And we had plans to do a lot more of that in person, or at least for our team to be in person. And all of it all of a sudden was remote. And so we had to think about new platforms to use, new tools to use, how to best uh, share learnings and languages, um, learnings and communication through different channels with our external partners as we were trying to do it internal as well. Yeah, one of the things that I think I've heard as a refrain from so many people is just the sheer amount of learning that people have had to do this year, right? Learn how to learn new technology, learn new ways of expressing yourself, learn new ways to communicate and learn new ways to try to be relevant and um, funny even when you, know, when you don't get the, the personal presence. And so I really want to acknowledge just, you know, what this has taken, right? So what we're, we're all up against in order to be able to um, handle and address and you know shuck and jive if you will and so i really appreciate that you guys have been able to con continue to iterate and innovate yourselves um and you're a, a company of, did you say 75 people yes okay um and so they another question is coming in with all that do you have an it department i would assume so because you're so technology based Yes, we have software engineers. We actually don't have sort of IT support. Like if my computer breaks, I have to just go to Apple. Um, but we have a very large product and engineering team that's building our own product. Mm -hmm. um, and um, a couple of things real back quick, quick on you, Karen. Um, I, I should have clarified this because of our conversation. You may not be in New York City right now. Are you in New York City? <laughs> I am actually right now. We just okay. spent a month uh, in Virginia, but I am okay. back in New, in okay. New York now. So I, I want to talk more about that in the next segment. Yeah. Um, now, let's, let me, let's understand it from your vantage point. As, a, as a, an individual human being, you're separate from Order Group. How has the pandemic been for you? What, what are some things that you've learned or you've had to deal with? Yeah, it's really interesting because I am a helper and a healer by nature. So I want to make sure everybody else is okay. What can I do to help you, friends, family, coworkers, anyone, society, like anyone I want to try to help. And I realized that my adrenaline kicked in and I was trying to help everybody else. And after a few months, I totally collapsed because I never took care of myself. Um, and so that was actually one of my biggest learnings was the thing that was always sort of my best attribute ended up causing some self-harm. And so I had to take care of myself and make sure I was, I'm only as, um, I'm only as good for others if I'm good to myself. So that was one of my biggest learnings. Otherwise, I actually really leaned in. My husband and I are very fortunate. We've got a decent sized place in New York, even though it's New York. Mm -hmm. um, us and the two cats and the dog just kind of hung out and watched a lot of Netflix. I actually went back and watched some old 80s TV shows just for fun and a little escapism. And we would just try to find moments to step outside with our masks and be as safe as possible in our neighborhood um, just to get some fresh air and appreciate what is what we did have. Mm -hmm. Let me let me grab what a uh, key point that you just made there for our listeners and our viewers that that's the point about self care mm -hmm. that we really can't take care of other people unless we take care of ourselves and so so much of what I'm doing in the world is helping people help, help people to get present to their passion their inspiration and their purpose and their meaning because those I want them to live on the same level as sleeping eating 
drinking water, et cetera. It should be that basic and fundamental because that's all a form of self-care. And just to your point, you can't take care of other people if you're if you're not taking good care of yourself. So that is a fantastic way to take us into our first break. I'm Dr. Elise Cortez, your host. We've been on the air with Karen Weeks. She's the Senior Vice President of People at Order Group. She's the author of Setting the Stage, a guide to preparing for any feedback conversation and the host of the podcast, Getting Off the Hamster Wheel. We've been talking a bit about how she got into HR, what she loves about it, and what Order Group is up to. After the break, we're gonna get into how they've been able to respond to their employees to support them and keep them growing and thriving. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Dr. Elise Cortez is a management consultant specializing in meaning and purpose, an inspirational speaker and author. She helps companies visioneer for greater purpose among stakeholders and develop purpose-inspired leadership and meaning-infused cultures that elevate fulfillment, performance, and commitment within the workforce. To learn more or to invite Elise to speak to your organization, please visit her at EliseCortez.com. Let's talk about how to get your employees working on purpose. This is Working on Purpose with Dr. Elise Cortez. To reach our program today or to open a conversation with Elise, send an email to Elise, A-L-I-S-E, at EliseCortez.com. Now, back to Working on Purpose. Thanks for staying with us and welcome back to Working on Purpose. As I I said at the beginning of the show, I wanted to tell you where to find my book, Purpose Ignited, is now on Amazon. Uh, I actually wrote the book to turn readers on to their passion, inspiration, and purpose and transform them into inspirational leaders. It really was a true labor of love. I loved every moment of it. And frankly, it wouldn't be here without the pandemic. I can tell you that right now. So <laughs> that's one of my my pluses from the pandemic. If you're just joining the program, my guest is Karen Weeks. She is the Senior Vice President of People at Order Group. Joining us today from New York City, I'm your host, Dr. Elise Cortez. So I want to get into how some of the things that you and I talked about already on the phone about some of your response and what you've done to take care of your people. Um, but before we do that, let's kind of unfold the events for people so they recognize what happened. So you you told me that um, you said that New York City began talking about the pandemic in late February. And by March 9th, people were working from home. That's amazing. Yeah. So help us back, take us back in time and tell us what it was like at at that time, your experience, what it was like to be at order group and your people. It was so interesting. I don't know if I was naive or just had never experienced something like this before. Obviously none of us have, but I could, looking back, I can't get over how fast everything changed. Mm -hmm. I was actually at a conference in Florida, the end of February, texting with our leadership team around, okay, so first we should make sure there's no international travel, you know, literally the next day, no US travel, probably later this afternoon, if anyone is traveling, they have to quarantine. I mean, it was just happening so fast. And then by the first week of March, we were realizing it was not if, but when are we gonna send everybody home? And it was very distracting. People were riding the subway. It was so unclear what was going on. The news was just a waterfall of, now this is canceled, now this is canceled. Mm -hmm. And everybody's anxiety was just skyrocketing through the roof. So we came together as a leadership team and talked about it. I am so thankful that I did not actually have to call that meeting, our CEO did. And he said, I'm worried about the team, let's come together and talk. And so we very quickly decided that we just need to send everybody home. So on Friday, we said, grab what you need. We're going home, maybe for the rest of the month, maybe into April, we'll see, but take what you need. And obviously we are still remote today. (laughs) And so we definitely underestimated everything, but yeah, I mean, it was just rapid fire, but we didn't want people to be distracted by what was going on. We didn't want anyone to get sick. We were so thankful, but that no one had gotten sick yet. You know, we work in a huge building in New York city. We just didn't want to take any of those risks. We are a company that's fortunate enough. Everybody has laptops. They can technically work from home. Let's just do it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I know for me being in Dallas, we we had a little bit later waves. It was, it was the middle of March when it hit us. And same thing. I was, my daughter's spring break was um, starting to unravel. She was going to go skiing in Colorado. They closed that down. She says, I'm going to come back home. Mama, can we maybe go down to Austin? Like, yeah, sure. Let's do that. I'm driving down to Austin and I hear they're shutting down Dallas and they're shutting down Austin. And I, same thing like you, I'm like, 
what is happening? I mean, I had no idea, right? The, the, the shock that we've gone through on this and what we've gone through as a world is incredible. So I just, I want to presence all that for what we're going to talk about as we talk about your, how you've taken care of people. But I also want to get to what you also said on the phone, which I thought was really interesting, is you said that two weeks after, um, you know, I, I guess when you guys found out about this, New York City was shut down and people complied, you said. Masks were worn and all kinds of things. So help us into that world. It's it's very hard to imagine New York shut down or, you know, cloistered and, and people changing their behavior that quickly. Yeah, it's really interesting. There's something about New York City that even though we are so big, we are a strong community and we come together and take care of each other when we need to. Um, I wasn't here for 9-11, but I heard a lot of stories about that. I saw it after Hurricane Sandy because we were here for that. Um, and it's just what New York City does. So people may have not liked it. Obviously, you know, huge economic uh, economic impact, which was scary and sad for so many businesses. Everybody around here is a small business. But we knew that New Yorkers were dying at a at a pace that was not okay. And not that any pace is okay, but really not okay. And so we had to shut it down. And so we followed the orders. Um, you saw stores shut down. You saw people stay home. So I live on one uh, near a street in Brooklyn, which is a very busy street, lots of restaurants, lots of shopping, Saturday night, you know, booming with people. I was walking the dog at 8.30 on a Saturday. I went maybe three blocks and around and I saw one person. Wow. And that was the moment where I said, this is serious. Like we are not messing around here. And thank goodness people are taking it seriously. And as soon as masks were decided that that was the thing to do, everybody wears masks, even on the streets, not uh, of course in stores, but even just walking on the street because we're all so clustered here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's just, it's so hard to imagine. Um, I have been working from home for so many, for so long that that, that part didn't, didn't un- undo me, but I can't even imagine what it's like if you're used to going into an office building and you're used to be walking around to go get dinner and all, all those sorts of things. I just can't imagine how upending all of that has been. Yeah. And there's a real grief about it. Um, mm-hmm. And realize how much you may you know complain about your commute but that's actually really precious time that you have by yourself mm-hmm. maybe it's to decompress from the day or prepare for the day um, it's the only time you get by yourself depending on your family and home situation so there was a real grief for losing all those things and people who had weddings or f- special trips planned none of that was happening and so i think that was one thing that also people weren't expecting again after that initial adrenaline rush there was a, a real sadness for what was happening, not just literally, but also what we were losing. Mm-hmm. But I, I think I've heard it best, especially um, as we go into the holiday season, I would rather not see my family now or not go into the office or whatever today so that I can and others can in the future. And I think that was the attitude that people finally got through as they worked through their grief. Mm-hmm. Well said, very well said. Well. I'm very intrigued with the uh, the the cascading effects of this pandemic as how it's how it's going to affect society, how it's affecting, you know, how how do we rent office buildings? How how you know how much what's the price of gas? Where are people living? I have a I'm very I'm, I very much imagine that um, the makeup of cities and suburbs and small towns is going to change a lot as people start to move. And in fact, you told me that. Um, of your 75 employees, 10 have permanently moved away from New York City and another five to seven have temporarily moved elsewhere. That is so fantastic, I think. Well, so talk to me, talk to us about that. What, how was this communicated? Did they say, hey, I'm going to go to Montana or did they, did you, did they, did they need to tell you or how did this work? Yeah, so it started with um, people just naturally doing what they needed to do. We talked about flexibility earlier. We were saying, do what you need to do with your families, be safe, whatever you know works best for you. So some people just kind of scattered to either be closer to their family because they were single or on their own, or they needed to be closer to elderly parents or whatever the thing was that was driving it. And we just sort of, you know, it just kind of happened. But then as it went on and on, um, you know, and mid-April became, well, we're not going back till June. And as we got closer to June, clearly that was not changing. And so we actually changed our language to say, we will always have an office for people to go to when it's safe. However, this is working. In the worst of times, us being more distributed across this country and working remote is working. We're still hitting our goals. People are uh, successful in their roles. So we're actually going to keep this as an offer. Um, If you want to move outside of New York or outside one of our hubs, 
if permanently, that's totally fine. Just talk to us so we can make sure we're set up as a uh, entity in that state and those, you know, legalese and tax purposes. Um, if you want to, if you end up staying in New York, but you only want to go into the office a couple of days, that's totally fine. So we gave people the choice and we said, we're going to move to a flexible work from anywhere policy. Just work with us to make sure we have you set up the way you need to. And we've started hiring outside of New York City for the first time, which is mm. very exciting for us. And we found amazing talent because of it. So it all stemmed from we trust our people to make the right decisions about their lives and still be a great order group team member. It actually doesn't, it totally against everything we thought, it actually doesn't matter where they're doing that work from. That's amazing. A couple of things I want to follow up on that. First, uh, you know, that you that you do trust them. It's amazing what happens when you trust people. They want to keep that trust and it's precious to them. So they lean into it, right? I think that's amazing. Um, so then the, the next thing that's interesting is that you instituted that you could work from anywhere. That's fascinating. Um, now, what I didn't know, and this you're teaching us something, teaching me something new. So you're saying that in order to support or be in, in alignment legally that if you have to sort of have an arrangement with whatever state that they're in? Yeah, we actually have to register as a business in that state. So if someone okay. does move to Montana and we, do, we are not recognized as a company there, we need to because we actually, both for employment law and employment tax purposes, but also potentially for sales tax. Okay. Um, so there's myself and the finance, um, head of finance work together to kind of make that work. Um, within the tri-state area, you don't have to worry about it. But the minute you get a from a non-commutable distance to one of our offices, we have to set up uh, a nexus in that state. Okay, that's really important and good to know. Thank you for that. Then the next thing I want to drill down on it and, and talk about is, you know, you said this notion of that you 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 trusted the employees to make the choices and decisions that were best for their lives. And and what I what I know about know to be true about that is you now what you're doing is you're allowing you're creating a space for people to architect their lives in an optimal way. Well, what employee is not going to be thrilled to death to be at that company and want to give their best for that? You've allowed them instead of so what what I'm so intrigued with right now, Karen, is that I'm very much on the on the path to be able to help employees stop doing this thing where they create all these systems and require people to go into all manner of, you know, trying to wrap themselves around that in order to lose all of their individuality just so they can, you know, drum to the heartbeat of the company and all the policies and all the procedures. And it's just, it takes their soul away from them. Yes. Um, so I really, really applaud that you took the notion that you were going to be, truly you are people centric. Well, it's really interesting that you mention, um, you know, sort of all the pieces of their lives and being able to bring that to the table, because then on top of COVID, obviously all the racial injustice that happened over the summer, and we were having really tough conversations around how do we make sure people feel welcome and can be their whole selves. And, you know, whether that is, you know, their background, their ethnicity, and what that means to them, whether that is the chaos that's happening around them, because they've got kids or whatever, um, whatever their true identity is, we want them to be comfortable. And it continued to build on the same theme of, you know, one of our values is what you see is what you get. And it's all about authenticity. And we realized it was all building on that same value of, whatever your life needs to be, whether it's this moment, because we're going through this really odd time, or because of what's important to you in your life, we want to be able to support that. Because if if you're able to live your, your true life, then you're actually able to be a better employee of Order Groove. And that's where that marriage I was talking about earlier of, you know, individual success and business success actually go together. Uh -huh. I think that's splendid. I love it. That's one, that's one of the big reasons I wanted to have you in the show, Karen, because I think you're, you're showcasing some really best practices there. And I think that's fantastic. So again, why do I do the show? It's about stewarding the conversation toward creating a workplace where people can actually thrive and we can do business in a way that betters the world. So I think you really are showing some great practices there. Thank you. You're welcome. Quick question again from a listener. Uh, do you have a, do you have to file a business in each territory? It's a great question. I don't want to give an official answer because I'm not 100% right. sure. Um, I think it depends on the state. So if there is you know, income tax and some of those things, you do have to register. There was one state that we were investigating um, that we didn't think we had to because of whatever laws were down there. So definitely work with um, you know someone who knows a lot more than I do. Um, yeah. But it's, it's a good question. You just should ask yourself the question and then find the expert who can give you the answer. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, listener, for for weighing in with us on the conversation. 
Okay, so I want to talk a little bit more about what you've done to support your employees. Um, I know that uh, you know that you've had practices that you've su supported them through the pandemic, flex schedules, et cetera. But what else have you done to support your employees and reach out to care for them? Yeah, so we've done it a couple of different ways. We've tried to think about the individuals. So we've also uh, this summer did some extra uh, company days off. So a random Friday and additional time um, at mm -hmm. Labor Day to give some extended time. Because one thing we were hearing a lot, which I'm sure other people have heard, is that it's very hard to disconnect when you are living and working in the same place and your your escapes aren't probably there. You know, I can't go to the movies. I can't go to a concert after a long day. So I just kind of keep working. Yeah. And so we wanted to force people basically to take some time off. So we did things like that. We also really focused on some community building. So what used to be, you know, sitting at a kitchen table and, and chatting while we ate lunch or, you know, uh, bowling after work or whatever, we wanted to still build those com the community. So we've done a lot of small group things. We personally have found big uh, company-wide Zoom things are not successful for us. Yeah. I don't know if we're too big. I don't know if it's our personalities, but we do much better in smaller groups. So we do, uh, one of our product managers loves to cook. So he does a cooking class, you know, every couple of months. We Love have a it. book. It's, but he's got a whole setup. He's got a second camera. It's amazing. Um, you can really tell he gets into it. <laughs> but can it. you smell and taste the food? Oh my God. Different house. <laughs> he's going to figure out how to do that. If anyone does, he will. Um, you know, we've done book clubs and workout classes and, and movie nights and things that small, trivia nights, things that smaller groups can do. Then we found that's a good way to build community. Um, but then we also had to think about new platforms to use. So, you know, our engineers whiteboarded all day. And when they didn't have those whiteboards, Either A, we actually literally got a task rabbit to bring some whiteboards to some of our engin engineering managers' homes, so they have them. But we also found some online tools as well. Um, Google has something, for example, that they were able to start using to, um, as best as possible, recreate how they like to work together and how they collaborate together. Mm, well done, very well done. You know, and it just, it really, I'm, you know, this takes an investment, it takes support, it takes reach, it takes all of this. So I really, really applaud what you've done. Um, so, and again, it's, it's an example, Karen. So thank you. Thank you. It's it. Uh, I, like I said, I am so thankful. I know plenty of people who work at organizations that were not taking this approach mm -hmm. and their teams were suffering, their teams were leaving, HR people were leaving, you know, if you're not going to listen to me, why am I here? Right. And I am so thankful that that was not the case at Order Groove. Uh, Greg and Aaron, who are our CEO and COO, you know, they were right next to me, if not ahead of me a couple of times saying like, we need to figure this out. Um, so I'm very lucky for that reason. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's, let's celebrate. It's celebratory. Love it. It's time for our last break. I'm Elise Cortez, your host. We are on the air with Karen Weeks. She is the Senior Vice President of People at Order Group and was named one of the 2020 Notable Women in Talent by Crane's New York Business. She is a certified career coach, speaker, advisor, to startup companies, girls in New York Tech board member. Stay with us. We'll be right back. After, we've been talking about um, really the response to COVID here. After the break, we're going to get into, into hearing about some of the unexpected gifts from the pandemic. Stay with us. Dr. Elise Cortez is a management consultant specializing in meaning and purpose, an inspirational speaker and author. She helps companies visioneer for greater purpose among stakeholders and develop purpose-inspired leadership and meaning-infused cultures that elevate fulfillment, performance, and commitment within the workforce. To learn more or to invite Elise to speak to your organization, please visit her at EliseCortez.com. Let's talk about how to get your employees working on purpose. This is Working on Purpose with Dr. Elise Cortez. To reach our program today or to open a conversation with Elise, send an email to Elise, A-L-I-S-E, -E, at EliseCortez.com. Now, back to Working on Purpose. Thanks for staying with us and welcome back to Working on Purpose. Another announcement that I have for you, lots going on over here. We've launched Gusto Now, which is a growth and transformation e-learning platform featuring leadership and professional development courses. We do it in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, my favorite, my favorite languages. If you're just joining us, my guest is Karen Weeks. She is a senior vice president of people at Order Group. Joining us today from New York City, I'm your host, Dr. Elise Cortez. 
So let's talk gifts, Karen. One of the things that was fun when we were talking about what we what we wanted to what we wanted to, to discuss today is you said, "Hey, I found a couple of gifts." So um, one of the things that you said, which I thought was so beautiful, in one of our exchanges is you said companies that are doing this right, meaning getting the response that are that are are going to get recognized for that through retention of their team. So tell us about some of that feedback you were mentioning from, from in our exchange that you're getting from from employees. Yeah, it's um, so amazing because with, this goes back to, you know, when you trust people, they trust you back and trust bank investments are very, very important because depletion is much bigger than re-earning it back. And so, you know, I, we've heard a lot of things. We've done some trials around some um, stress management classes. Um, we tried... Um, different coaching for folks if they wanted that. So we basically, we, we've we been taking the reactive approach and just trying different things, learn from it, and then we'll figure out what's right for 2021 from a more strategic standpoint. And I have been so overwhelmed by team members reaching out to me and saying, you know, I can't believe a company cares as much about me. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you for doing this for my family. How are you doing during this? <laughs> and the fact that someone even thought to ask me, which is not the case in a lot of uh, companies, shows that they felt taken care of enough that they were willing to think about someone else. So, you know, the poll surveys and all that are, are helpful. And I like seeing the feedback there. But honestly, those one on one um, conversations mean the world to me because it means that what we're doing is adding value to someone's life. And that's the whole reason why we should be doing it. Yeah, I, I sort of got when you were talking that there's this sense of we're in this together. We got this. We're, we're taking care of each other and we're, we're, we're going to get through the other side of this together. And what I also know about that from a meaning vantage point is that what that gets to is there's a, a limbic resonance that's happening among your team where everybody's kind of jiving at the same energy level and that connection is actually shared mm -hmm. and it's palpable. It's so interesting how it works. And so when you get to, when you, when people feel like you care about them, in fact, I had Bob Chapman on my radio show. He is the CEO of, um, Barry Way Waymiller, and he's, his whole thing is about caring for your employees, mm -hmm. just like you're talking about. Extremely successful businessman and, and business owner, so beautiful. Um, and then the other thing, you've alluded to this before, but I want to make sure we showcase it as a, as a topic here, but you said one of the other things that the pandemic has ushered in is this notion of bringing your whole self to work. Say more what that means and why that's important. Yeah, so it actually started because a couple of people were embarrassed by their homework setups. Um, you know, you watch CNN or whatever, and they've got the bookcases behind them. Right, and, right. You know, I cheated. I set up a little bit today before our conversation. And we wanted to let people know, like, that's not normal. That's not expected. You just be you. And so we actually did a photo contest of the most creative way you set up your home office. And so people were showing, you know, desk chairs on top of dining room tables. So they had a standing desk. Someone else was using their kids like easel as a little thing for their laptop. The purpose was like, it's okay that this is messy. Just, just survive. And you know, that's what we're trying to get out of this. So that's kind of how it started. And then, you know, through um, Black Lives Matter and some of the things that happened over the summer to this ongoing sense of, oh my gosh, now I'm trying to figure out if my kids are going back to school or not. I don't know what to do about that. So it just continued that the cycle of you are a whole person. You've always been a whole person, by the way, but 2020 has really brought that to light. And so whether that is you're feeling sad today, you're feeling stressed today, today's just a bad day, that's okay. I'm actually doing pretty good today and let's celebrate that. Like what's making you feel more positive today? Let's celebrate that. Um, I've got, you know, a little one over here and a dog over here. That's okay if they bark, do not apologize. We had our all hands meeting, which is our big town hall this week. And our COO, Erin was presenting and her son was having a total meltdown and she let him into the room and he just sat there and yeah, he said some funny things and like, that's <laughs> fine. It is what it is right now. And you know, don't apologize for that. That's your life. That is who you are as a person. Um, and like I said, I always try to encourage that, whether it was mental health or inclusion or just the quirky selves that we all are. Um, but 2020 has said, has put that on full display as we've been doing all of this from our home now. Mm -hmm. You reminded me when I first had my daughter in 2003, I remember having, cause I did some work from home back then too. And I remember being horrified if she like said any sort of sound or let, if she cried, I mean, the world was over with, right? <laughs> so you're right now we see dogs coming through and cats, the funniest things you've seen cats and that the back ends of cats and dogs. Yeah. 
awesome showing up in the video and they're like, okay, that's your, your pet. I got it. Yep. <laughs> so, and it, you know, it, it happens on CNN during the election. Some guy's teenager like walked into yeah, the live yeah, feed, you yeah, know, it yeah. is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's definitely a whole new world, right? Yeah. So, um, it goes, it certainly speaks to your authenticity value. Yes. Um, Okay, well, along those lines, one of the other things that I thought was definitely worth talking about that you you told me in our first conversation is that your CEO is stewarding honest racial conversations in all of this. Um, so how is this happening and what significance do you see taking place from that? Yeah, so he really struggled with the CEO email that he was supposed to send, you mm -hmm. know, in mid-June. And he and I had a conversation. And he said, I don't want it to sound like a template. I don't want it to sound like everybody else, mm -hmm. but I know I need to say something. And I told him, I said, so tell them that, like, say, I don't know what to say right now. I don't have the answers. I want you to know I'm struggling with this and this crushes my soul. I don't have the answer, but I'm here as your ally. And that's fine. Like, that can be your email. That's okay. And I think that opened the conversation. We actually started a diversity council after that where volunteers from across the organization have joined together to try to figure out how to have more of those conversations. We did a training with managers about how to have some of those uncomfortable conversations because we're not going to have the answer. Order Groove is probably not going to solve racial injustice and systemic racism in this country, but we can do our part to make sure that our team members know that they are supportive, they are welcome, no matter your background, no matter anything, like you are welcome here. And so just by saying those words out loud, I think opened up the dialogue for others to have some of those conversations. And I've had some of the most honest conversations with our team members than I think I've had in the four and a half years that I've been there. So that's fantastic. And so in addition to even opening up a conversation around race, that's just, it's so important to talk about it anyway. And I want to say two things about that. One, I appreciate and applaud that your CEO knew that he needed to do something about that and, and, and sought your help to do that. And two, I, I want to recognize that, you know, it's, that's a growth, that's a step of growth for, 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 for people, right? To step in around something you're, you don't know anything about, you're uncomfortable, but you know you need to address. And by the way, you're the guy that's in the leader seat. Yeah. So I do a lot of work with executives and, and helping them, you know, when you're a leader in a pandemic like this, it is really difficult. I mean, you're like looking around like it's on me, right? Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate and applaud all of our leaders that have had to not know what to do in this thing and not know who to be in this thing. And, you know, they're like, I just, let me just call uncle. I'm telling you, I don't know what to do here. Yes. And so I, I ended up working up with a lot of them to support them. And I know you do too. So really want to applaud your CEO for his courage his willingness to be vulnerable and not know and just step in it. Yeah. And I think vulnerability is one of the, so funny, we talk about that as one of the key attributes of leadership. Mm -hmm. And it's, I think 2020 is an example of this is when you show up to be those things. Like you show up to be vulnerable. You, you show up to be authentic. This is the moment where actually being it now means more than any other time because it's in the hardest times that people tend to retreat or go into their safe zone. If you're willing to be vulnerable and, and have those conversations now, that's the sign of true leadership because it's hard to do that now. It is. Yeah. Speaking of that, I want to grab a, a question that you and I talked about that is really important. I, I, I really appreciated that you said that in all of this, you've embarked on some specific training to help managers have difficult conversations with employees. So what kind of training is this and what kinds of issues is the training designed to, to address? Yeah, it was initially designed to talk more about some of the uncomfortable personal conversations. So mm -hmm. um, mental health, burnout, which is now part of mental health, obviously. But, um, you know, I feel you know, I think some people feel like I'm only allowed to talk about race if I'm feeling discriminated against while actually maybe there was a microaggression that I felt that I never talked to anybody about. And it, you're not going to have those conversations if you don't create space for them. And so that was the training for the managers is how in your one on ones do you first of all, just overall creating psychological safety, um, you know, trust and those things just in general on your team. And then in your one on ones, how do you ask some questions about not just how are you doing, because it's easy to say fine or hanging in there or whatever, but how is your day? How is this day compared to yesterday? How is this compared to last week? What's a win? What's a roadblock? If you ask some pointed questions, you actually get much more insight into how someone's doing. And then showing that vulnerability and authenticity of how you're doing opens the, opens the safety net of, oh, I can really talk about this because they're willing to talk about it. Um, and then it stemmed into some things around, you know, how do you find the balance between 
I understand what my team is going through and I really empathize that something's really stressful versus I'm a manager and I need to be a leader of this organization and sort of wear my order groove hat without feeling like I'm just towing the company line and how to find that balance to someone may share, you know, I don't know if this is the right place for me and how to have that conversation. Cause that's okay. Like people yeah. aren't going to stay at companies for 30 years. That's totally okay. But that's an awkward conversation. So that's where it sort of went through during the training was managers were bringing up some of these questions as well. I want to acknowledge that. That's fantastic. So again, you know, you're wondering why do I bring this man up, but I really do revere Bob Chapman and his, his whole idea of truly human leadership. And he, one of the things that he says and the conversations that I've had with him is he, he can go out there and he speaks to organizations all over the world about this. He says, I talk about how important it is to care for employees, but the, he says the problem is people don't know how to do that. Yes. You're teaching them yes. how to do that. That is so fantastic. Bob Chapman, did you hear this? This is, this is progress. <laughs> we're making progress. Um, okay, uh, we're almost out of time, but I want to grab the one more, two more questions for you here. Um, you already talked a little bit about some of these smaller events that you're doing, but you, you said you were trying to figure out how to do virtual company events where people feel engaged. And you like the small events and you you already told us about the cooking. But the reason I want you to talk about this is because in my consulting with my clients, I hear some of the biggest burnout is people don't they're not feeling connected. They're not feeling like they're they're together. Um, so say a little bit more about some of the things that you, you've you been doing beyond the cooking class. Yeah. And I think the other thing, too, is um, people are also on Zoom meeting it as a concept, not literally the company fatigue. And if yeah. I have to get on one more video call, I'm going to puke. And so right. we've also tried to do some offline things. Um, apparently, food is a thing for us because we also did a recipe book where people got to share recipes from their families, um, which was also sort of part of the inclusion piece. Um, so we've been trying to do small things where people can get a chance to get to know each other more on their time. So if they miss this one, that's okay because there's another one tomorrow morning or there's another one at lunch or there's one completely offline and you don't have to worry about getting on another Zoom call. Um, another one that we've been using, there's an app called Donut um, and it randomly pairs people in Slack to have a donut and coffee. And so now mm. obviously that's all virtual, but especially for new hires, we've been really encouraging them to sort of join that channel because that's the way you meet those random people that you would have bumped into in the elevator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so we've been trying to leverage a couple of things like that. Um, we also started to use something that does a random question every week in another Slack channel. So we're big Slack users um, that it's a random, this week it was, what's your favorite side dish for Thanksgiving? And the, the question all of a sudden prompts 25 messages about very strong opinions about Thanksgiving meals. And so that's another <laughs> example of, I don't have to be on a Zoom call. I don't have to do it at two o'clock. I can see that at 10 o'clock at night if I want to and respond about why I feel adamant that you know mashed potatoes are so important. So I think it's really leveraging technology, but also going back to your roots of some people just want to get together and chat about something they have in common. And that's mm. enough. Um, my biggest concern is definitely with the new hires that don't have those relationships prior and how to make sure they feel part of the community. Mm -hmm. Well done. It's just beautiful, Karen. So we've done it. We've managed to get all the way to the end of the show. So I like to give my, my guests the, the last word. So you know this program, Karen, is one that's listened to across the globe. What we're up to is trying to help our listeners learn how to uh, find or develop workplaces that are meaningful and steward inspirational leadership and do better in the world in terms of business. What would you like to leave our listeners with? So I think my biggest thing is it's not about getting it right or wrong. It's about getting it right for your company. So we've talked a lot about authenticity. What does your company stand for? What's the promise that you've laid out for your team? And how are you actually going to live that through your values, through your culture, through your employee promise, whatever you want to call it, but do what's right for your organization and then actually live it. And that will not only give your company more purpose and stand out amongst the competition, but it'll also make your team actually feel everything that you've promised to give them when they first join the team. That's beautiful. What a great way to finish. Very, it's just the whole conversation. We've had a fantastic exchange, Karen. You've really helped us understand what order group has had to deal with, confront, how they've responded, how you really have created a place where you, you, you trust your employees and you're you're doing your best to help them help steward their overall full life, not just what they're doing at, at order group, but how do they actually create a life that works for them? And I really applaud that and celebrate that. That's why I wanted to have you on the show. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for letting me share our stories. I hope they helped others. Absolutely. I'm sure they will. 
If you want to learn more about Karen Weeks, her book or her podcast, start by visiting her own personal website. It's KarenDWeeks.com. Let me spell that for you. It's K-A-R-E-N, D like David, Weeks, W-E-E-K-S, KarenDWeeks.com. Last week, if you missed the show live, you can always catch it being recorded podcast. We were on the air with Ron Barger and Andy Eby, who are launching a servant investment fund anchored in conscious capitalism called Servant Investors. I heard from one listener who told me he was moved to tears of inspiration when they read their company credo on air. Truly magnificent what the human spirit can do working from purpose. Next week, we'll be on the air with Dr. Holly Woods, author of The Golden Thread, Where to Find Purpose in the Stages of Your Life. You're up for a treat. See you there. Remember that work is at least a third of our life, so let's work on purpose. We hope you've enjoyed this week's program. Be sure to tune into Working on Purpose, featuring your host, Dr. Elise Cortez, each week on W4CY. Together, we'll create a world where business operates conscientiously, leadership inspires in passion performance, and employees are fulfilled in work that provides the meaning and purpose they crave. See you there. Let's work on purpose.